In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes-Benz C300 AMG line premium model. This video is also perfect if you just bought the new C-Class. Congratulations, you've picked a great car, or if you're thinking about buying one. Check out the link below where you can use my summary sheet of what features and options the C-Class has. Also, I want to say a big thank you to Lucas Mercedes-Benz Wolverhampton for helping me make this video possible. Now let's start with a video and I'm going to show you the C-Class and right next to it is the actual S-Class. I find it quite funny because the S-Class is considered the bigger brother and the C-Class is considered the baby S-Class. When I was walking up to it I wasn't sure which one was which. I think you can consider this a good thing. Both cars are very special in their own right. First I'm going to start on the exterior and work my way around the car. Now I'm just going to show you how to use the fuel petrol cap and how to access it, how to fuel your car basically. Uh, first you have to make sure the door of the car is open and then when you look inside you can see the tire pressures on the right. Also when you want to put your fuel in you can put the petrol cap just there onto the side and then when you're finished put it back just like that. Now I'm going to show you how to actually use the Mercedes-Benz key. It's very similar to the S-Class key. To unlock the car, you just press the button there. Now the electric door mirrors open up and the doors are open. And then to lock the car, you press that button. Now you can see the electric door mirrors closing. So now at the rear, you can actually press this button here and it will open the boot. And if you really want to, you can close it using the same button. Just hold it down and the boot closes, which is pretty cool. To open the boot, you can actually use the handle inside. And now you've got a couple of buttons here. This one closes the boot. This one closes the boot and locks the car. The inside of the boot is huge. You got these buttons here, which folds down the seat. And you've got your carry hooks here as well, next to the buttons. So you can put carrier bags onto the carry hook. You got your tire repair puncher kit here, and tire inflation kit. First aid, a visor, and a little basket that you can open up. Tether hooks on either side. I should have mentioned the thing in the plastic is actually a book pack, which is a manual for the car, and also a complimentary USB C adapter is also supplied. Close the boot. Now to open the back or e e any of the doors, as long as the key's on you, open the door or lock the door. You can see a little square. If you put your fingers on it or your hand, that'll lock the car. The rear is definitely family friendly with uh, tether points at the top and you have your isofix at the bottom to get your child seats in. Two adults can sit happily in the back and a child in the middle or a small person. This one is the premium model. So we don't have the climate control at the back. And then this is actually where you can store your phone if you want to. I might have a spare phone on me. Yep, I do. Let's have a look. It's pretty cool. And then I can open the cup holders. Really snazzy. Then to fold it away, just tidy it away like that. Lovely interior. Now I'm going to get out of the car.
Uh, I'm going to just show how to use the child safety. What you do now? The inside when someone's inside the car, they can't open it unless someone outside opens the door. Leave that back the way it was. And now, so you might find that you might not want to use this keyless function. If that's the case, you can actually disable the key. What you need to do is double tap the lock button. And you might have noticed the little LED light. When that holds like that, that means now that this key is disabled. And now I can't actually use the keyless function. But to reactivate it, all I do is press any of the buttons and it's now back to being a keyless car. I would recommend both keys disabled when you're at home. If you are out and about, let's say a shopping centre, you'll be fine leaving the keyless technology on. Next I'm going to show you the interior main features of the car. Now what I'll do first is get comfy in the car. So to use the actual functions, all you do is actually just touch these buttons like that where it's perforated and you can move the seat accordingly which is quite cool. You can even extend the fire support which is lovely. There is also four way lumbar support. I'll just show you the buttons. You can also control the steering adjustment because this is the premium, this car has the premium package. You can adjust it all electronically. This is an option with the electric memory seats. You press M and press the number that you want to save and you hear that beep, that means now that it's saved this driving position which is lovely. You can save three different uh, driving positions. But the heated seats here, that's at fullest and then as the lights go down, the less heat the car will emit on the seats. So moving down from the door, you've got a button here which allows you to open the boot and get a little warning on the instrument cluster and you can see there the boots open what I can do is close the boot electronically all I do is push the button and then light has gone on the instrument cluster and you can see the boots gone down moving on Got the electric windows, front and back. This switch here, if you press that, means that the kids at the back can't open the windows, which is quite handy. And then you've got your electric folding door mirrors. You've got right and left mirrors, which you can adjust. So if I select right and select these little buttons on the top here you'll see the mirror is moving top tip when you select reverse that mirror will actually go down when that goes down i would adjust the mirror according to accordingly to how you like it and then next time it will save that mirror in whatever position you select reverse into now i'm going to show you how to actually use the gearbox on the car so you've got the gear stalk here and you can see what gear you are in so at the moment we are in park and if i want to all i'll do to select reverse i'll select all the way up and now you can see that the car is engaging reverse the reverse camera also pops up and because this car has the premium package it has the 360 camera this gives a bird's eye view of the car. So when you check the reverse camera, you can see there's a red line. 
and when you're driving make sure you never go past that red line because you will actually hit the bumper so that's just a guide for you and you'll see these little little dots now that's the recommended space that mercedes-benz say you should park your car uh, next to a wall or next to a car and that'll give enough gap for people to walk past now as you steer the car the guidelines actually show you where the car is going to travel to which is really useful to help you assist in when you come to park in the car now you've got all these different switches as well so this is part of the 360 camera you can have a look at different camera angles look at that that's pretty cool Now you can see a message on the screen saying GPS position saved. In the future, the camera will be auto activated here, which is a very useful feature. So I'll leave it like that. I think that's the best way to use the camera with the 360 camera, the bird's eye view, you could call it that one. And then the reverse camera there. And if you need to, you can change to see certain parts of the car. Very useful. To drive the car, you push down, and then the car's in drive, and you'll see one, and as you're driving, that changes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's just telling you what gear you're in. And if I touch it just slightly, the car goes into neutral. A little warning to say I should put it in park. If I want to put it into park, there's a button here. And now it's going into park by pushing that silver button. What you can do as well, as you're driving, so it's in drive, I can switch the car off. And the car will automatically put the car into park. And the handbrake comes on as well, which is quite useful. But I would always recommend, if you ever do that, just make sure the car is in park and the handbrake is on. So I'll switch the car back on. You can actually put the car into drive or reverse and the handbrake automatically comes off. But I've put the car into park and let's say I want to put the handbrake on for whatever reason. All I do is push that button and then the handbrake comes on and if I want to pull it it releases the handbrake so push to put it on pull to release now while you're at a red light waiting to go you can rest your feet and put the car in a hold function to do this you just double tap the brake by slowly touching the brake and then pushing it or when you gently pressing the brake and then push it. When you're ready to go, then just press the accelerator. Pedal. You can also just press the brake again to stop using the hold function. Stick the car back into park. Now I'm gonna move on to the steering wheel. Uh, these functions here control this part of the screen. I'll put that back into mute. Again, these buttons here control this screen. Put that back into home. These buttons over here control this screen, which is quite useful. And I can really have a good play and see what kind of layout I want. So the best way to describe these functions is like when you used to have an old Blackberry phone. You just move the touch sensitive buttons. I'll leave it in classic. Yeah, I've got the sat nav there. Now moving on to the infotainment screen. The dynamic select button here. I press that, changes the car to different settings. 
uh, you can customize the settings if you really want to I would normally just drive this car into comfort keep it in comfort and you'll know what driving um, style you're in when you look here you'll see C which stands for comfort E is for economical sport sport plus and I means individual where you can customize the transmission the steering uh, the ESP this button here you've got the parking sensors that you can switch off this is quite useful if you're ever getting your car washed or in a busy traffic situation where people are walking around you the car sensors will go off so you can switch them on and off there active lane keep assist I would keep that on interior protection now this is useful if you ever leave anyone in the car and you lock the car as you at a petrol station let's say if you switch this off that means the alarm won't go off if you do leave anyone in the car and the light is on that means the alarm will go on so definitely useful there tow away protection just leave that on unless you're being towed away all settings this is getting very advanced and I can show this in a separate video in the future but it's very cool to have all of this customization you got your hazards this is very very cool so to activate a fingerprint basically uh, technology it remembers uh, I think about seven different drivers but you have to have Mercedes me set up connected which uh, your Mercedes-Benz dealer will sort out for you because this car is a demonstrating vehicle I haven't got connected to Mercedes me but I can maybe in the future do that in a separate video let me know what you think if you'd like to see more that button will actually either switch off the display you might want to do that if you were on the motorway driving at night switch it back on by pressing the button if you want to completely switch it off you can if you really want to and you can see everything switched off switch it back on just press the button and you've got your volume controls here it's really nice and easy simple to use I'll just put it back into mute your climate control again nice and easy it's right down here if I want to set the temperature on that side I can and I can have my side at 22 degrees which is lovely if I select auto auto will then basically figure out how to distribute the fan air all around the car and I always just leave in auto the only time I ever use this function for the front and rear windscreen let's just switch that off the only time I use those functions is when in the morning and once these the glass is actually demisted I'll stick it back into auto and let the car figure itself out on how to distribute the air uh, then I find the windscreen doesn't doesn't get misty let's say you want it to be 22 degrees around the whole car what you can do is press the climate button press the sync button and now you'll see it's 22 degrees and you can see I can adjust the temperature but if I adjust the temperature this side it then goes back to having different climate zones and if I press that goes back to the same as the driver the driver side is the main side now if you press this button you'll see the ventilation in the car stops and the fans stop working again you can distribute the air how you want to if you really need to but I always recommend leaving an auto I also recommend using the AC at least once a month but honestly I just leave it I leave it on that button is quite a useful function if you ever drive on the motor and you get smelly air coming into the car press that button and that should try and make the car less smelly 
moving down you got your cup holders which you can adjust accordingly really useful function and you've got USB-C connectivity which is the future you've got wireless charging just under here which is quite cool and if you ever get a message that your key battery is charging you'll get a message here you can actually put the key over that area and that will actually charge your car key which is quite cool got some storage here glove compartment nice good space and then moving up here in an emergency always press this button if you need fire ambulance or police press that button and you will automatically send the information to Mercedes-Benz to let them know where you are and you're giving permission for them to know where you are and the person on the phone you've got a built-in sim card in this car they will speak to you to check if you're okay and send out the relevant emergency services if you were ever in a crash and the airbags ever go off the SOS system will automatically work the car will automatically send your information to Mercedes-Benz and the operator will try and engage with you if they don't have any reaction they'll automatically just send everyone out to you which is quite useful you got your lights here rear lights front lights uh, again Mercedes me functionality if you need to get your car booked in for service potentially you could do that uh, this this is quite useful if you don't want the lights to be on you just press that switch to get the lights off and if you had the premium plus package you'd have buttons over here to operate the sunroof but this car hasn't it's only got the premium package uh, you might notice the passenger airbag light there uh, so it's saying it's off that's perfectly normal all that means is when someone sat there the airbag will actually come will switch on will say on there instead of off I just noticed that you can also press these lights now I'm gonna pair my device to Bluetooth so what I'll do I'll put it into settings I'll then go to Bluetooth make sure it's on and now I'll go to device connect device so it's on my phone all I'll do is click on SP, SP iPhone which is what my phone is called I'll then get a passkey which marries up click pair on the phone and then I want to allow everything so it can give all the information and because my phone has Apple CarPlay I want to actually use Apple CarPlay as well and then you can see now I've got Apple CarPlay connected to my lovely brand new Mercedes-Benz got all my apps on there MBX is brilliant but it's nice to have Apple CarPlay and I can still use all of the main functions of the car and if I want to go back to Apple CarPlay go all the way to the end Apple CarPlay it's just a very intuitive system I forgot to mention you can connect another mobile phone device but instead of selecting phone 1 you can select phone 2 and then connect through Bluetooth now I'm just going to quickly show you how to use the radio let's say it's just really simple to tell you the truth FM DAB you'll find the best version so DAB kiss and if I want to make that into a favorite all I do is click on that little star there 
and now it's saved into my favorites and at the, currently there's two favorites if I want to get rid of that just get rid of it like that that's quite cool as well actually I can just skip if I want to you got some buttons here so you got a list format if you want to do a list format traffic assistance was quite useful and then you can adjust the different sound settings if you really want to you got some more settings here so MBX we could just do a separate video on this because look how many different things there are loads and loads of cool features the ambient lighting I love this you can really just customize all the different colors I think I prefer multicolor monochrome would just be one color around the car the brightness set a max that's how I would like it because you can then kind of see it in the day as well but in the night it just looks epic absolutely love that when you change the temperature the fans actually change color so if you go hot it will go red and if you go cold it will go blue I love these air vents lovely to feel you can just hear it clicking away now moving back to the instrument cluster I just want to show you all these different screens so classic is actually really good and I can uh, check out some more information this car's only done 28.4 miles amazing brand new Sport, how cool does that look? Get the G-force there. Love that. Understated. This is quite cool, especially on a motorway. You just want to drive. Oh, you can change the different colours as well. That's quite nice. navigation so if you want the sat nav just completely on the screen you still got all the key information that you need including speedometer I love as you're driving the car will tell you what uh, speed you should be doing let's have a look what else we got here assistance this is only really useful if you've got the driving assistance package which I'm not sure if this car has I'll give you a little drive later and just see how that feels and then if you ever want to check if your car's in for a service and stuff you can see all that, that key information very very useful you got your tire pressures as well even temperature which is quite cool on the previous c-class had a 2016 one didn't have the temperature I'm going to move it back to classic and I really love this instrument cluster because you've got your time there but you've also got your temperature uh, the P sign there that again is for the self parking feature so the car will be looking for spaces to park into which is quite cool and here is your fuel and do you see that little triangle there that's just saying that the fuel cap to open to fuel up the car is on the right side on this car which is quite cool and then 350 miles just means that's how much range you've got with the fuel that's in the car this is a C300 petrol so that seems pretty reasonable considering it's not done any mileage I think it needs a good run and that could increase the power EQ charge so this car does have self-charging 
So as you're driving, there's a small electric motor in this car which just gives it a little, little extra oomph as you're driving. And it's all there just to save fuel as well, which is quite cool. And the car will just charge that battery separately by itself. And you can see right at the top there, it's telling me to put my seatbelt on. Um, Oh yes, I forgot to show you this, the cruise control and limiter. Let me know if you want a separate video on this because um, I think it will be quite hard to show you today. I don't have the right equipment to show you that. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Your Burmester surround sound. It's lovely. Got another tip. So if you can press mute here if you really want to, but you can do it on the steering wheel, all you do is just push the button there. I need to give a top tip when using this car. And I think it's really underestimated. Now, if I ever want to put the heated seats on, you can do it by pressing a button if you really want to. But I always do this. Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Put the heated seats on. I'm switching on the seat heating. How cool is that? Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Switch off heated seats. Seat heating is turned off. You can use that feature wherever you like for whatever main controls. This is the end of the video now. Thank you for watching. Please share, subscribe, comment if you've got any suggestions for future videos. Thank you.